Good morning after the last few days of heavy rain as we gather together for worship. We're going to light the peace candle and then we will join together in prayer. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So we join together in worship as we sing together a hymn which is entitled We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. first reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 to 7. The Song of the Vineyard. Listen while I sing you this song, a song of my friend and his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug the soil and cleared it of stones. He planted the finest vines. He built a tower to guard them, dug a pit for treading the grapes. He waited for the grapes to ripen, but every grape was sour. So now my friend says, you people who live in Jerusalem and Judea, judge between my vineyard and me. Is there anything I failed to do for it? Then why did it produce sour grapes and not the good grapes I expected? Here is what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge around it, break down the wall that protects it, and let wild animals eat it and trample it down. I will let it be overgrown with weeds. I will not trim the vines or hoe the ground. Instead, I will let briars and thorns cover it. I will even forbid the clouds to let rain fall on it. Israel is the vineyard of the Lord Almighty. The people of Judah are the vines he planted. He expected them to do what was good, but instead they committed murder. 
He expected them to do what was right, but their victims cried out for justice. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, and we read from John chapter 15, 1 through to verse 17. Jesus, the real vine. I am the real vine, and my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. Remain united to me, and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit. For you can do nothing without me. Those who do not remain in me are thrown out like a branch and dry up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire where they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit and in this way you become my disciples. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another just as I loved you. The greatest love you can have for your friends is to give your life for them. And you are my friends, and if you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer, because servants do not know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because I have told you everything I heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. And so the father will give you Whatever you ask of him in my name, this then is what I command you, love one another. If you watched WOW this week or maybe got hold of the notes, you will remember that we concluded that devotion with a challenge or a question that went like this. What does it mean to be rich in God's sight? I hope that today's sermon we will answer something of that question but we begin at a very different place. And so I'm going to give you five seconds for you to come up with as many synonyms for the word authentic. Do those synonyms describe you as a follower of Jesus? Here are some of the synonyms that I came up with. And maybe you came up with them too, but I had a long list. Genuine, original, real, actual, pucker, bona fide, true, attested, undisputed, rightful, legitimate, lawful, legal, valid, kosher, dinkum, the real McCoy. And there's much more to the list if you Google it. But many people would say that Christians or churchgoers are such hypocrites. They don't practice what they preach. They don't live what they believe. Often they say one thing and do something different. Sadly, many of these people are more right than they are wrong. Many people profess to be believers profess to be Christians and followers of Jesus, but often their lifestyle, their words, their actions don't 
live up to that. As Christians, we must be aware that people are watching us all the time. The moment we profess to be a Christian or a follower of Jesus, or even if we tell people we go to church, people begin to take note of how we live, what we say, and what we do. In John chapter 15, Jesus gives us a way of determining what is an authentic follower of Jesus. And so to be an authentic follower of Jesus is to be rich in God's sight. Jesus says, look at their lives to see if they are bearing fruit. In fact, if you read the passage from John's Gospel, Jesus mentions fruit bearing eight times. The first thing to notice in the passage is that there's an expectation of fruit. In the Old Testament passage from Isaiah chapter 5, God's people are compared to a vineyard. And the owner of the vineyard was expecting good fruit. In verse 7 it reads, Israel is the vineyard. He expected them to do what was good. He expected them to do what was right. God expected good fruit. Likewise, Jesus expects fruit from his followers. Jesus says twice in the passage that we read that we need to have the fruit of love. He says, my commandment is this, love one another as I have loved you. The fruit that Jesus expects of us is the fruit of love. Jesus looks for his love in the lives of his followers. And if we're not doing that, if we're not showing and ex exercising and expressing that love, if we're not bearing that fruit, then we're not bearing fruit at all. And that fruit mustn't just be fruit, it needs to be good fruit. Then we're not doing what Jesus expects of us. And we're not doing what Jesus calls us to do. The second thing to notice in the passage is that there are conditions to good fruit bearing. Pruning on the one hand and abiding on the other. Pruning means removing everything that hinders our relationship with Jesus. Pruning means removing everything that is preventing good fruit growing. There's a story of a sculptor who sculpted a very beautiful angel out of a block of marble. And somebody who saw it asked the artist and said, how did you manage to carve such a beautiful angel? And he replied, very simply, I just chip away everything that is not of the angel. In the same way, that's what pruning is. It is cutting everything away that is not of God. Cutting everything away that gets in, our, in the way of our relationship with God. Giving more place and more space for fruit to grow. Pruning also means that we are not perfect. We don't always get things right. We, not always, we don't always have it all together. There's still work to be done. And there will always be pruning to be done. Abiding as well, on the other hand, is choosing to live with Jesus. Choosing to abide in him. The term abiding describes an intimate relationship of the vine and the branches. The branch cannot survive if it doesn't abide in the vine. And it's the same with us as followers of Jesus. We cannot survive if we do not abide in Jesus. And the only way to be pruned and to abide is to maintain a spiritual connection with Jesus. We must do whatever we can and whatever we need to do in order to facilitate that connection to be true and real and good. Remember that Jesus 
is the vine and he's always present. He will always fulfill his side of the relationship as long as we remain abiding in him, in union with him. Jesus is always present if we abide in him. We might not always feel like he's present, but our faith reminds us again and again that he is. Pruning and abiding is an ongoing and never-ending process. The third thing to notice in the passage is the benefits of good fruit bearing. First, others will know that a person is an authentic follower of Jesus because of what they see, because they will notice Christ in that person's life. The characteristics of Jesus in our lives is really uh, reflected in the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5, and you'll remember them, I'm sure. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. The characters of Christ. As people see us, do they see those characteristics? Because that's reflecting Jesus. How does that, you might remember that Bible verse, and it used to be a song as well, but it goes like this. And they will know that they are Christians by their love. Do people know that we are Christians because of the way that we love? Secondly, good fruit always brings glory to God. An authentic follower of Jesus always points others towards God. There is evidence of a deep connection with the Almighty in these people's lives an authentic follower of jesus there is a sustaining strength that often helps people get through difficulties that we seem unsurmountable but they manage and often those people will point others to god there's a sense in an authentic follower of jesus that there's a wider community it's not just about them so what does it mean to be rich in God's sight? It means to be a healthy, fruit-growing or fruit-bearing Christian, displaying and living and sharing God's love with others, abiding in Jesus and being pruned and pointing others towards Christ. When people walk through a fruit orchard, they determine the kind of tree by the way it looks and by the fruit that it bears. When people walk through your life or see you walking through life, what fruit do they see? Do they recognize the fruit of God's love? Can they see a Christ-like life in you? Are we rich fruit bearers? in God's sight. We're going to listen to a song and invite you to sing along as the song expresses something of God molding us and shaping us. We worship together.
Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the promise of shaping us, molding us, and we make ourselves available to you. And in that shaping and molding, Lord, we pray that through your spirit, you would grow your fruit within us. May we be good fruit bearers. And as we share that fruit and grow that fruit of love, may others see that we are authentic followers of you. We pray, Lord, that that authenticity would flow out into the lives we live, into the way that we care for those around us, the way that we reach out to those in need, the way that we lift up the sick, the ill, the victims of society, the way we pray for our country, our president, the way we hold our world and the pandemic that we're living through in your hands. We pray, Lord, for all the needs that face us. We pray that through your spirit and through love-filled people that others would come to know who you are and recognize your love. We pray, Lord, for our world. We pray for justice, for love, for your grace, and for people to come and know you more and more. In your precious name we pray. Amen. As we conclude our service together, receive this blessing. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost and proclaim Christ in all we do and say. Amen. I pray you have a blessed week.